is up, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Numbers, presented by Nylon Calculus, part of the HP Basketball Network. I'm joined here with my main man, the Alaskan assassin and editor of Nylon Calculus, Seth Partnow. Seth, how's Alaska treating you? Uh, I just want to, the, the Alaskan assassin is Trajan Langdon, who was recently just hired by for a, a, a player administration role with the Cleveland Cavaliers, so I can't, uh, I cl- can't claim that moniker, so, but uh, appreciate it. You wrote a really interesting article this week on Nylon Calculus that was about bully ball. It was sort of talking about why teams that have a big post pref- uh, presence aren't able to take advantage of small ball lineups. Uh, one of the reasons that small ball works is because of rule changes. And this has kind of been well documented and, and well written about over the last year or so. The other reason is that three is greater than two. Um, yeah. This is kind of an analytics thing, and it's kind of the yeah. last, uh, really the last decade that this has caught on. Um, the, la- the other thing was that post-ups can take too long. Uh, you mentioned Shane Battier in your article. He talked about this a little bit. The 2013-14 Golden State Warriors are, are the example that always sticks in my mind just because of, of how little they move the ball consider, compared to how the passing talent they have on their team, as we saw last year. But you see, oh, we got a mismatch here. Let's, all right, uh, direct some traffic. You guys go over here. You guys go over here. Now you post up. Now I throw it into you. And all of a sudden, there's like 11 seconds on the shot clock. And you've done nothing else except try to set up this this play and the defense kind of knows what you're trying to do. And the guy catches the ball at, you know, nine feet away from the basket. And then all of a sudden you're playing with half a shot clock in a, in a not great situation. The last thing, and this is really the thesis of the article was just that some post players are better than others at posting up little guys. And that sounds a little bit counterintuitive. I think most people, when you see a Roy Hibbert being guarded by a Shane Battier, they get frustrated. Well, you're so much bigger than him, just turn around and score. But really, that's a different skill, isn't it? Yeah, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, like Hibbert, actually, because he's so big um, and tall, I mean, he his his center of gravity is high. It's pretty easy for a guy like Battier to shove him out those extra couple feet. And then, you know, he's not the most skilled guy. But really, you know, an eight-foot jump hook isn't a great shot for anybody except for Kareem. You know, right, it's right. There, there. I mean, there are people who kind of have that and are better than that. But in general, that's that's not a it's not a great shot. And so the guys who maybe are better at kind of bully ball are the guys who are all right, all right. I'm stronger than you. I'm either going going to catch the ball right at four feet and just jump over you and lay it in, or I'm gonna get get one power dribble dribble straight through your chest without drawing a charge and get to five feet and, and or and, and lay it in. And those are kind of a, a different kind of players than than you know necessarily the 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 super tall Roy Hibbert's perfect example of a guy who just because he's so tall doesn't always get great leverage in, sure. in those situations. And I think this one's especially close to home for me because you know obviously it was a lower level of competition, but I played the post uh, throughout my basketball career, and I always found it harder to post up littler guys, or at least it was it was less comfortable. And I have a couple theories for that. The first is kind of what you talked about. You use different post moves against little guys because the big man is solely focused on blocking the shot. A little player might have a a different uh, set of principles or a different set of of things they're going for. They might be trying to time your dribble. If you're using a one dribble post move, that's what they're going for. Or they're trying to get contact to draw a foul. Or they're trying just to force you into into one spot. So it's a different set of post moves that you're going to use against uh, a smaller player. Or like, whenever I got stuck in that situation, the move was like to go for the strip on the way up. Yeah. Just like, it, yeah, and and I'm sure that you, that you loved it when when people when people did that to you. Right. Right. Um, it's it's a different thing. The other yeah. thing is, I think a lack of repetition. You think about a guy like Roy Hibbert's been the tallest guy on the court his entire life. He's always been posting up other bigs, so he's never played the guard spot or, or done this. It's always big men go down on this end of the court, work on your post moves. You don't get a lot of repetitions as you're coming up, going up against smaller guys. Do you think that is a factor? Uh, probably, because again, as you talked about, like if you're being guarded by a guy of similar size, you're trying to kind of make a move. Uh, whereas if you know if you're going to take advantage of size, you're like you want to be in a situation where you don't have to make a move. And that's, you know, if you have a size and strength advantage on a guy, you know, your best 
bet is to, you know, shove him right under the basket, catch the ball and lay it in. Right. right correct. And so, um, and then if you, but if you catch the ball out further on the floor, he's probably quicker than you. So, you know, making, trying to beat him with a move is all of a sudden you're, you're playing, you're playing to his strength rather than yours. And that's, you know, as you said, if you're used to being guarded by guys, you know, your size and or around that, you're used to using more deception rather than just raw power. Sure. And, and so it's a completely different skill set and, you know, like you said, different reps. Um, it's, I think you can see it oftentimes, you know, a guy gets a little, a uh, uh, big gets a little guy on him, tries to post up, sticks the chicken wing out, the guy flops offensive foul. Sure. And because you think you can just shove the guy out of the way and it's not really how it works. And well, it's I'll tell you, that's a, we should call that the uh, DeMarcus Cousins rule because he's a guy that really uses his size really well against other big guys. But when you put a, a little guy on him, that little elbow on the spin move or that little push off now becomes a big push off because he's got a hundred pound weight difference on a guy, right. and that's you know he's going to get a call much more frequently against a smaller guy, and you kind of have to adjust your game. Well, let's go into a couple specifics that really sure. stood out. The first one was Jonas Valanciunas, who's a very good post player, one of the best post, most efficient low post scorers in the league by points per possession on post ups. Um, but he really didn't see any improvement uh, from posting up bigs to posting up smalls. He was right around, I think, 60% field goal percentage. Um, and we kind of saw that in the playoffs when Randy Whitman surprisingly went to a small ball lineup and it really uh, threw Valanciunas off his game and made him unplayable. Why do you think that is? Without having studied him in very much detail, um, I will say that he, he seems like a guy who's very used to, you know, if, if you're used to posting up a big guy, you're kind of, you're leaning up against each other, you use that leverage, you kind of roll off, shoot a hook shot. Well, if he's being guarded by a small guy and he's not really feeling that same resistance or something like that, that can, that can throw him off. Entry pass once again to Repko, a mismatch, and JV has set up shop on the inside. It's some him and some their offense, I think. Wasn't sure. necessarily set up for him to, all right, I've got a small guy on me. Let me bury him under the rim, catch it, and lay it in. Right. And that's, I think, you know, that's really the, the way we're, we're talking about taking advantage of a mismatch, I think has to happen much more before the guy gets the ball rather than, all right, he's got the ball against the small guy now. What do we do? The next guy is uh, uh, Kenneth Fareed. And, um, you know, he's a guy that's a terrible post-up player. I wrote about it for DenverStiffs.com a little while back. He's a guy that has one move, and that move is really a, a dribble with your right hand to the middle of the court, running jump hook, and he's six foot nine, six foot ten. He's got incredible if that's. If, if the, He's got incredible athleticism, though he gets well above the rim on his jump, and he uses that move on anybody. And I think that's a move that would not work so well against somebody like Roy Hibbert or uh, Rudy Gobert, but it might work on Shane Battier just because Battier can't get up that high um, to contest well, it. And also, I think that you know he's making that kind of that power roll off his off his left shoulder to the basket. Probably, if he's got a, a weight and strength advantage on a guy, that's a four foot shot. Whereas if it's a guy who can kind of you know body up and 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 nobody moves either way, kind of off towards or away from the basket, or even he gets pushed out a little bit, then it's an eight foot shot. And again, that's a a huge difference in terms of of you know overall efficiency. Six to shoot. In the lane, around his man, put it up, yes, off the window. One theory I've had with Fareed, I've, I've never really liked one-legged post moves, moves that finish off of one leg. And the reason I don't like that is because there's no options out of it. Once you commit to that one-legged move, you kind of have to go up with it. It's very hard to come to a stop. Whereas with two-legged moves, if the move's not there, you can kind of pivot out and, and maybe do something else. And I wonder if there's something to, this is just a theory, but I wonder if there's something to one-legged post moves being more effective against smaller defenders. That, that, that might be, because you're kind of, you're committing, but since you're committing with kind of all of your size, strength, and weight, and you have an advantage in that situation, then you're, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're making a hole almost. Right. Whereas against a big guy, a bigger guy, you're bouncing off. Right, for sure. So, there, there might be something to that. That's, 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 I, uh. Food for I thought. like that theory. Uh, the next one that's interesting, uh, Gortat, Nene, and Boozer. All very good players against smaller uh, defenders. All incredibly strong players. Some of the strongest postmen uh, in the league. Is there a correlation there, do you think? 
Um, I think so. I think especially with with like Boozer is definitely a guy who, since he's not not you know a super leaper or anything else, uh, and Nene to an degree too. I mean, they're both guys who are going to try to put you in the basket, like either when they get you know on the catch or or one dribble power up. And Nene, you know, I watched him obviously for several years here in Denver. He's a guy that is as tough as anyone to move off of the block, even for other big players. So he's a guy, if you're a smaller defender, you've got no shot at, at getting him out of the position he loves. I've I've heard multiple NBA players say he's the strongest guy in the NBA. Yeah. Oh! Westbrook leaving, and another charge called on Westbrook. And now Nene knocks Westbrook down. He's not, he's tall, but he's not, you know, he's 6'9". Um, and so just that, rather than being seven foot, just that little bit lower center of gravity probably helps him hold position just that little, that little bit better than, you know, uh, a, a lankier guy like a, like a Hibbert or maybe like a Brandon Wright or something like that. And lastly, I wanted to ask you about uh, LaMarcus Aldridge because you brought him up specifically in your post as somebody that was very good about scoring against smaller players. And I've been a little bit of a skeptic of that uh free agency acquisition for the Spurs. I didn't know how it would fit. In Zach Lowe's column a couple weeks back, R.C. Buford mentioned they don't have a roll to the rim guy like Splitter was now. But you brought up that, uh, you know, they might be able to, this might be a move that was directly designed to counterbalance what Golden State has had so much success with. Can you talk a little bit about what, uh, what you think he might bring if Golden State their biggest competition in the West might try to go with that small ball against them. Well, I mean, he's a guy who's skilled enough who can just simply, you know, he gets the ball at, he, he might not need to get to five feet from the basket. He gets the ball at eight feet and you know, what's Draymond Green going to do to bother his shot? There's just no, nothing that, 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 uh, that a small ball defender is going to be able to do to, you know, you can maybe push him out, make him shoot further. But once he gets, you know, as long as he's on balance and turns and looks, that's a shot that, he can shoot under no real duress, and so I think that's that's something that really gives him an, an edge in in those uh, those size mismatch scenarios. One last thing this has me thinking about: I've written a little bit this summer about the evolution of the league and how the I think the small ball revolution might be more of a stopgap between something else than it is the permanent manifestation of the league. And that's not because I don't think the theory behind it works. I just think that post players will evolve to be able to defend pick and rolls and three point shooters better and then also take advantage of, of post ups like you said uh, so I think you know this might just be the first step in, in in realizing when we have smaller defenders we can't just play the way we've always played we can still take advantage of a size matchup but we're going to have to figure out what works in that in that arena do you see that yeah. at all yeah, I think so. I think that uh, you talked about uh, the Battier on on Zach Lowe's podcast, and he brought this up a little, and and uh, I I kind of agree with it. I mean, a pick and roll has been a staple for a long time. Um, what's not necessarily as prevalent as it used to be is all right. We're going to dribble the ball down. I'm going to stand here, point to the side of the guy. You come set a screen. Uh, San Antonio was really kind of an innovator with with this. You know, if they were going to have uh, a splitter come set a set a ball screen for Tony Parker, they'd start off by someone having it, setting a screen for splitter. A little right. bit of misdirection, a little bit get his man uh, kind of trailing the play a little bit, and then get into the, to the play, and that gives them some more options. I think that we're going to start to see a little more uh, uh, cleverness and misdirection in terms of of post entry, um, so that you know guys can. You know, because because the the three second rule is still there. You can't just set up under the basket. A throw me the ball. Right. Um, but we might start to see. All right, we're going to set a screen over here, and then a guy's going to roll, flash to the basket, catch the ball at the you know at the the top of the of the restricted area, and then go up. And just more plays to kind of get guys the ball on the move uh, or closer to the basket, rather than the the what I like to call kind of the the ISO post right. of just like okay, stand there, stick your hand up. Guy's going to push you in the back. I'm going to throw a pass that's going to lead you three feet further from the basket. I think we'll we'll start to see some more cleverness in terms of, of getting the guys the ball in good spots so that they have to do less work with the ball. To score. Terrific stuff, Seth. Very fascinating discussion. Make sure you check out his article on nyloncalculus.com. Follow him on